Welcome to Parchment Update, an interview series from the Parchment Community Library to bring your community closer to you. I'm Karen Woodworth, Library Ambassador. I'm joined today by Katie Wittenauer. She's the Director of Programs for Michigan Humanities. We're going to talk about the Great Michigan Read since the Parchment Community Library is beginning our participation with a launch party on Monday, January 8th. Katie, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Karen. It is a pleasure to be here and so happy to kick off the new year with you. Yes, I'm so happy to talk to you today. And I want to start out by asking you to please give us an overview of the Great Michigan Read organized by Michigan Humanities. Yes, absolutely. So uh, the Great Michigan Read um, is an exciting program that we um, coordinate throughout the state. It reaches, you know, libraries, community colleges, high schools, um, Michiganders, uh, you know, from every um, part of the state. And what it is meant to do is to provide a, a common read that is focused on elements of Michigan history and culture that also prompt folks to get into um, humanities topics and um, parts of that Michigan history and culture that they might not know about. And the way that we do that is by gathering together um, seven different regional selection committees every other year. And those selection committees um, bring together, you know, their nominations, their ideas for what would constitute um, a great and engaging Great Michigan Read. And then we have a selection process um, and ultimately vote on which one of those um, selections will be the next Great Michigan Read. And so we're always looking for something that's, you know, pretty recently published, something that of course has that Great Michigan focus. It can be fiction, it can be nonfiction. Um, but we want to make sure, too, that the author is available to tour around the state. And once we have that selection, we then start putting together our plans for making the book available, um, you know, thousands of copies that we distribute to partners. We start working on readers' guides, teachers' guides. And, of course, we have a lot of help in this through partners, um, whether it's teachers or different content experts who work together on those materials but our big goal is to make sure that those books and those educational resources are accessible um, to all of our Great Michigan Read partners. And so um, whether it's a, a library uh, like um, your community or whether it's the school, you know, on the other side of the state, we want to make sure that everyone has the materials they need to make that Great Michigan Read program meaningful um, for the people who are taking part in it and really have a chance to customize it. And so in addition to those things that I just mentioned, you know, there's other promotional items that we offer like bookmarks or posters. And then we have a great curated list on our website that has educational resources related to the content of the selected reads. So um, it, it always uh, evolves in ways that are, you know, specific to the chosen book. And we're just really excited um, to be uh, you know, several months now into uh, our Great Michigan Read with Firekeeper's Daughter. Yeah, I see this um, kind of a sort of a, a moving program that moves all, all through the state at different times. And so our participation is basically this January and February. Um, one of the things that I always find so, that I always appreciate so much about the book selected for the Great Michigan Read is the um, attention to the different themes of the book. So could you talk a little bit about some of the themes in this year's selection, which again is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, um, when I when I first read uh, Firekeeper's Daughter and then came back to it as a great Michigan read and was, um, you know, most recently looking at the reader's guide and the teacher's guide, I was struck by how many themes um, Angeline Bully has uh, really uh, collected and explored in, in this book. So it's it's really incredible, you know, in addition to it being a very compelling story in those elements of mystery and um, sort of a, a sort of self-exploration um, story. I think that there are so many important themes around identity. I think that several um, times throughout the book and in the reader's guide, um, there's this reference to um, walking in or walking to different worlds. So thinking about um, the main character, Donis, and the way that Donis is sort of navigating indigenous and non-indigenous uh, parts of her family and thinking through her identity in addition to sort of thinking about 
individual identity versus community identity and sort of individual priorities and needs versus the needs of the um, community. So I think that that is something that definitely um, comes through um, in the book. And of course, because of without giving too much away, you know, there are themes of um, grief. There are themes of thinking about how does the past impact the present? Um, how can the past be present uh, without sort of taking over? Um, there's also so much around um, family, around uh, women leaders in the community. There's a lot around, uh, again, without giving too much away, around justice and sort of uh, sort of un navigating what is what is right and wrong and what does justice look like. And then also I would say, and, and our reader's guide gets into this um, more too, but some of the um, historical impacts, historical trauma and um, substance abuse in the indigenous communities, also um, some conversation around uh, sort of native stereotypes and um, native identity, both historically and in contemporary communities. So uh, that is just sort of the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the themes um, that are woven throughout the book. And I would say too, that the reader's guide and the teacher's guide, which I always say that the teacher's guide is a, it's an awesome resource, Karen, because it's not just great for teachers who are looking uh, into ways to you know bring this book into their classrooms, but also if you're a book club, um, really diving into ways to sort of extend your learning around um, the book's themes. I think there's some great discussion questions and some great uh, supplementary reading in there too. So um, those resources, I think, really help draw out some of those themes. Okay, yeah, thanks. We've we've got some of those resources to give away, and we're going to be doing that at a launch party on Monday, January 8th in the afternoon. Um, I really yes. like your weaving analogy because all those themes really are just kind of woven through this really, really engaging story with a dynamic narrator. Um, I really think people are going to enjoy reading this book. Um, beyond just the enjoyment of reading the book, what do you hope people take away from participating in the Great Michigan Read? Yeah, thank you. That's such a great question. You know, this, um, the program has been around since 2007. And I think um, my first contact with the program was in 2017 when I joined Michigan Humanities. And I think every year that I am part of the Great Michigan Read, um, through my role and through visiting communities, seeing authors, uh, I think that having a selection that helps people uncover stories that they didn't know existed or helping them hear from members of their community about things that they may not have talked about um, previously or learning about parts of the state that they may not have known uh, much about um, in the past is, is a big takeaway that we hope um, folks leave with after being part of the Great Michigan Read. I think Angeline Bully uh, says it really well in the Reader's Guide when she talks about, you know, folks have lived in um, Michigan for a long time without fully understanding or knowing about some elements of Native history, Native culture, and um, even the geography, right, of Sugar Island and understanding a little more about that part of the, of the state and its um, significance. So I think that that is one takeaway that is um, particularly important. And then also, you know, we are very big on uplifting stories, uplifting histories. Uh, it's a big part of what we do at Michigan Humanities. And I think that uh, if I was to say, you know, what would I hope that folks would come away from the Great Michigan Read with? I think that a curiosity um, to read something more that helps them, delve, you know, dive a little bit deeper into um, what's been touched on in Firekeeper's Daughter would be a big hope that I have. And, and our resources hopefully will lead folks um, in whatever direction they uh, they want. And also, of course, whenever you get a chance to discuss something and meet a new person through those conversations in a book club or at an author visit, or um, you know, just talking with your family about what you're reading, I think that that is fulfilling um, you know, the goals of the Great Michigan Read. Yeah, yeah, well, that's great. Well, what else would you like us to know today? Uh, well, a few things. First of all, um, 2024 kicks off our 50th anniversary at Michigan Humanities. 
So we do have several exciting things coming up this year. If you are ever interested in learning more about um, the Great Michigan Read and everything that's happening in this 50th anniversary year, um, you can visit our website, michiganhumanities.org. And um, one of those things that's coming up in the not too distant future um, includes our spring author tour. So as part of our Great Michigan Read programming, in addition to making sure that um, Michigan residents can access the book and the educational materials, we also want to make sure that people across the state have an opportunity to talk with um, the selected author. And so Angeline Bully will be completing the second half of her author tour this April and May. And in fact, she'll be coming to um, a community very close to you in, in Portage. And that will be on um, April 16th at the Portage Senior Center through the Portage District Library um, collaboration there with the Great Michigan Reads. So that's something that we're excited about. And of course, if after your um, book club dives into Firekeeper's Daughter and is looking for more um, from Angeline Bully, there's also a Warrior Girl Unearthed, Unearthed, excuse me, which is um, not necessarily described as a sequel, but as a companion uh, to uh, Firekeeper's Daughter and maybe some really excellent reading for, for later in the year. Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed that book too. So I will also be recommending that one. Um, and that new Portage Senior Center is a wonderful venue. So um, we do encourage people to put that date on their calendar as well. Um, the dates here at the Parchment Community Library. First, again, our Great Michigan Read launch party on Monday, January 8th, 4 o'clock to 5.45 p.m. That's an open house format. Um, we're going to have a program on Potawatomi food traditions um, presented by Madeline Big Bear on Saturday, January 27th at 1030 a.m. And then we'll wrap up with a book discussion with the Parchment Book Group on Monday, February 12th at 6 p.m. Well, Katie, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today and share that information. Thank you, Karen. I hope that you and everyone who's part of the book club uh, enjoy the selection and enjoy learning about um, Ojibwe culture. And uh, I can't wait to hear about your events and looking forward to seeing you in April, hopefully at Angeline's author event. Thank you again for having me.